Welcome everyone to another very special Avenue of Heroes recognition program. The hometown banner ceremony has become such a beloved program, a way the community can really do something to honor the many men and women who have lived or served in Coronado during their military careers. Please sit back in the comfort of your living room and enjoy the ceremony. We're glad you're here. The Coronado High School Navy Junior Reserve Officers Training Corps will now parade the colors. Coronado School of the Arts alumni Kathleen Duga will now sing the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. The color guard will now retire the colors. The Hometown Banner Program is a military service recognition program sponsored by the City of Coronado. The program was introduced in 2014 and so far has honored 175 hometown heroes. In the notorious Battle of Iwo Jima, Ronnie Ham's battalion was the only one that would venture ashore. Its casualty rate of 40% was a testament to the intense bravery of its members. The city funds all the costs for this program and volunteers from the Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 2422, the Coronado Historical Association, and the Avenue of Heroes Neighborhood Association oversees its operation. I'd like to recognize the Avenue of Heroes committee volunteers and city staff who make this program possible. Chuck Lucas, Lee Fulmer, Jim Jamison, Vince Marchetti, Darlene Parker, Daniel Stewart, Janine Zuniga, and Kelly Purvis. I would also like to recognize all the biography writers. Without them, this recognition program would not be possible. The authors, many of them relatives or close friends of the honorees, research their lives and accomplishments. We continue to be amazed by the service and accomplishments of our hometown heroes and their connections to Coronado. The inspiration for Coronado's Avenue of Heroes came spontaneously with the movement of two Navy SEALs to their final resting place. News spread quickly in Coronado. The local Rotary Club passed out American flags, schools were dismissed, and teachers brought students to line 4th Street to honor the fallen service members. As the procession approached the San Diego Coronado Bridge, a lone Navy SEAL stood for hours at attention saluting as he waited for the passage of his comrades. And that moment, it was clear, 
3rd and 4th Streets were already an avenue of heroes. From that spontaneous beginning, the program was launched in May 2015 with 18 banners. Ceremonies are held twice yearly and, to date, heroes have been recognized from the Air Force, Army, Navy and Marine Corps. America's first aviator, James Doolittle, President George H.W. Bush, several POWs, including Vice Admiral James B. Stockdale, along with many others who grew up and attended Coronado schools or simply served here while in the military, have been among the list of honorees who have received a banner on the corridor. I would like to call attention to the Coronado resident who advocated for the program. In 2014, Tony McGowan became a strong proponent of honoring Coronado military members and promoting the Avenue of Heroes program. She proposed it to be sponsored by the city of Coronado. That same year, Coronado designated State Route 282, the 3rd and 4th Street corridor from Orange Avenue to Naval Air Station, North Island, as the Coronado Avenue of Heroes and granted McGowan's wish by adopting the Companion Banner program. McGowan also worked closely with the Avenue of Heroes Neighborhood Association and other organizations to have the Avenue of Heroes corridor designated a Blue Star Memorial Highway. The Blue Star program is a collaborative effort between the Department of Transportation and National Garden Clubs of America instituted after World War II to pay tribute to the nation's armed forces by honoring select state and national routes that served an important role in defense of our nation. The Blue Star Memorial Highway designation was passed by the State Assembly and became effective January 1, 2017. Sadly, McGowan passed away in early 2019, but she was able to see that the program was firmly established in Coronado. The Avenue of Heroes program is a reminder that Coronado has a rich history and legacy of service to country. You need not have earned a Bronze Star or Purple Heart. Any serviceman or servicewoman who has honorably served our country is worthy of recognition in a town known for its military presence. Nominees for banners must be past or present residents of Coronado who served or are serving honorably in any branch of the U.S. Armed Forces. An individual is considered a resident of Coronado if he or she presently resides or previously resided within the city limits of Coronado, including being stationed at Naval Base Coronado. Nominations are accepted on a continuing basis and we encourage everyone to consider nominating a deserving veteran living or deceased. The hometown banners measure nearly six feet tall and are hung from streetlight poles lining the Avenue of Heroes. They are highly visible for six months. New banners are installed on or about Veterans Day in November and Memorial Day in May. Once banners are retired, they are made available to the honoree or their family as a keepsake. The honorees or family members also receive a keepsake miniature banner, program, and lapel pin commemorating today's ceremony. Today marks the 12th time we've honored a class of heroes. I'm honored to support the Avenue of Heroes program, now recognizing its 12th class of honorees. Each recipient from each class is truly deserving of a banner on the Avenue of Heroes. The city of Coronado is proud of its military heritage and the recognition this program gives to those who have served. Hello everyone. Here we are for the second time in a year hosting a virtual event due to current public health orders that thankfully are easing but still in place. I'm Chuck Lucas, Commander of Local Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 2422 and Avenue of Heroes Committee Chairman. This event is very important to the committee and the city and we are happy to make it happen again, even if it's in the virtual realm. Committee member Jim Jameson and I will read the biographies of today's honorees in alphabetical order. Jim Jameson will begin. Hi, I'm Jim Jamison, Avenue of Heroes Committee member and Staff Judge Advocate for the Coronado Marine Corps League. Thank you for logging in and being here today. It is my pleasure to read the wonderful biographies for our honorees for the Spring Event 2021. As a Marine, I have requested to read the two Marines being honored in this group. When we held these events twice annually in the Coronado Performing Arts Center, we would ask the honoree and their families and friends to come up to receive a replica banner and pose for photos. 
For this virtual event, however, we will read each biography and during the reading present a video photo essay of each honoree to include the banner as it will appear along the Avenue of Heroes. Banners are now up, lining 3rd and 4th Streets between Orange Avenue and Alameda Boulevard. We have a great group of heroes, so let's get rolling. The first biography is for James Jim M. Collins II. The Marines and sailors that Jim Collins led into battle during Desert Storm 30 years ago still call him Skipper. 20 years prior to that, the Marines he served with on the ground in Southeast Asia called him Sergeant. Collins, a retired Marine colonel, was born in Moultrie, Georgia, and grew up in Martinsville, New Jersey, the oldest of four children. After attending college in Louisiana, he enlisted in the Marine Corps, finishing top of his class at the Marine Corps Recruit Depot, San Diego. After a short time playing baseball for the MCRD team, he deployed to Vietnam in 1969, assigned to 1st Reconnaissance Battalion. He successfully completed multiple reconnaissance missions deep into adversary territory as a team lead. On his final mission, he was hit with an enemy grenade, suffering extensive injuries to both legs. He was medically evacuated to Da Nang, where he received the Purple Heart. After recovery, he was released from enlisted obligations. He returned to school, but was recruited by the Marines to become a naval aviator. Ultimately, he flew the F-4 Phantom and the F-A-18 Hornet, picking up the call sign Red Dog along the way. He commanded Marine Fighter Attack Squadron 212, leading the Lancers on a successful deployment during Operations Desert Storm and Desert Shield. There, he would earn the Air Medal, First through Fourth Strike Flight Awards for heroic achievement in aerial flight. He later commanded Marine Aircraft Group 11 at the Marine Corps Air Station Miramar and served as the Senior Marine for Commander Naval Air Force's U.S. Pacific Fleet at Naval Air Station North Island. Collins' career took him, wife Sherry, a retired U.S. Naval Reserve Commander, and son Matt, a U.S. Builder, CB Combat Warfare Specialist, around the world. They have been stationed in Hawaii, Alabama, Texas, Washington, D.C., Germany, and finally San Diego, where Collins retired in 2002 after 35 years of service. Collins's personal decorations include the Marine Corps Good Conduct Medal, the Purple Heart Medal, Air Medal, Defense Meritorious Service Medal, Meritorious Service Medal, Legion of Merit, the Defense Superior Service Medal. His proudest achievement, however, remains being called Skipper by his Marines. The next biography is to Stephen Dormeyer. Captain Stephen Steve Dormeyer was born in Ottumwa, Iowa in 1942. When he was young, his family moved to Oskaloosa, Iowa. In high school, he was a top student, member of the National Honor Society, and an accomplished athlete, lettering in both football and track. Accepted by Dartmouth College and Carleton College, he chose Carleton, where he lettered every year in football and made many lifelong friends. He graduated from the Navy Officer Candidate School in 1965 and served as a service warfare officer for more than 30 years. He served on nine ships from a minesweeper to aircraft carrier. In addition to the Albatross, Durmeyer also served on USS Hartley, Garcia, Tillamook, Nipmuc, Saratoga, Dewey, Suribachi, and Wabash. He was commanding officer of four. Assignments ashore included tours of duty at Naval Sea Systems Command in Virginia, Ships Operation Division at the Pentagon, U.S. Navy Headquarters in London, Royal Navy Staff College in Greenwich, London, and Industrial College of the Armed Forces in Washington. His last assignment was Commanding Officer of the National Reserve Officers Training Corps Unit at the University of Arizona. Duermeyer served an extraordinary amount of time in South Vietnam waters. Albatross operated in bays and rivers in 1965, removing abandoned mines. In 1966 and 1967, Albatross participated in Operation Market Time, a coastal barrier patrol. In 1970 and 1971, Tillamook received damaged Navy combat equipment for transport to Guam for repairs. His Vietnam service spanned five campaigns. Later in his career, his ships participated in operations in or near Grenada, Lebanon, and the Mediterranean. The North Arabian Sea, the Arabian Gulf, and Operation Unitus in South America and West Africa. His awards include the Legion of Merit with Gold Star, Meritorious Service Medal with Gold Star, 
Navy Commendation Medal with Gold Star, and the Vietnam Service Medal with Silver Star. Duelmeyer has served Coronado as president of the Rotary Club, treasurer and vice president of the Coronado Historical Association, Coronado Community Church Chair, board director of Sharp Coronado Hospital Foundation, and with his wife Penny, formerly Emmons, president of the Crown Club. Thank you for your service. As a proud veteran, I'm pleased that the City of Coronado continues to support the Avenue of Heroes program that honors our local heroes. It's important to pay tribute to local veterans, deceased veterans, and active service members who put their lives on the line for this country. This next biography is for Ivan Max Dunn. Captain Dunn proudly served the U.S. Navy for 31 years. After retiring in 1998, he and his wife Katie moved to Coronado, where they happily settled. Dunn grew up in a small town in Missouri and graduated from Southeast Missouri State University in Cape Girardeau before joining the Navy in 1967. In 1971, he and Katie moved to Monterey, California, where then-Lieutenant Dunn attended the Defense Language Institute, learning Russian. Following language school, he volunteered for a special operations program involving deployments in fast attack submarines during the Cold War days. He had tours in Turkey and Spain, followed by several years at the Pentagon. After selection to commander, Dunn attended the U.S. Naval War College in Newport, Rhode Island, where he enjoyed a tour in Italy as the Sixth Fleet cryptologist on the USS Puget Sound, followed by three years in Hawaii. After selection to captain, he was assigned to head the cryptologic officer assignment and community management office in Washington, D.C. A three-year command tour followed in 1990 as the commanding officer of Naval Technical Training Command at Quarry Station in Pensacola, Florida. Another uh, Pentagon tour was followed by a final two years in Hawaii as the Assistant Chief of Staff of Cryptology and the Director of Naval Security Group Pacific. During his career, Captain Dunn was awarded the Legion of Merit, three awards, the Meritorious Service Medal, four awards, the Navy Commendation Medal, three awards, and the Navy Achievement Medal, and a variety of unit awards and campaign ribbons. After retiring to Coronado, Dunn worked as a civilian, first for Booz Allen Hamilton and later for AT&T. He is now fully retired and enjoys long bike rides and drone flying. He and Katie have two children and five grandchildren. They're members of St. Paul's United Methodist Church, where Dunn sings in the choir. He is a past president of the Coronado Ro Ro Rotary Club and the 2020 Rotarian of the Year. He lives the Rotarian motto, service above self, through programs such as Flags on the Avenue and Beach Cleanup. Thank you for your service. The next biography is for L. Russell Russ Hashman. Rush Hassman was born in Indiana in 1925. He enlisted in the U.S. Navy shortly after the bombing of Pearl Harbor in 1941 and served as an anti-aircraft gunner aboard the aircraft carrier USS Enterprise in the Pacific Theater. Hashman's first encounter with the enemy was the Battle of Midway, the pivotal naval engagement early in the war. USS Enterprise participated in many major actions of the war against Japan and became the most decorated ship in World War II. Hashman shared in the award of a presidential unit citation, a letter of commendation from the Secretary of the Navy, and the ship's seven battle stars. He left the Navy in 1945. Hashman graduated from Indiana University and attended graduate school at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. Appointed a special agent of the FBI in 1951, he served in Denver and San Diego and worked on several famous cases. Simultaneously, he served as a pilot and commander of the Colorado Wing of the Civil Air Patrol. Upon retirement from the FBI, he worked in security for American Airlines and later to various government agencies and corporations. In 1992, the U.S. Navy conducted a reenactment of the Doolittle Raid, an intrepid operation conducted in the early months of the war to bomb the Japanese homeland. As a crew member of the Enterprise Air Group that supported the famous raid, Hashman was privileged to be a guest of the Navy aboard the reenactment aircraft carrier. Hashman and Lieutenant Colonel James H. Doolittle, U.S. Army Air Forces, were good friends and a pre-enactment flyby tribute by Doolittle's home was doubly meaningful. Hashman was known for his wonderful disposition, warm smile, and adventurous nature. 
He was a pilot, hot air balloonist, scuba diver, skydiver, and world traveler. He was also a Mason, a member of the Rotary Club of Coronado, the Navy League of Coronado, the Society of Former Special Agents of the FBI, and the Experimental Aircraft Association. Married to his wife, Jean Mills Hashman, for 56 years, Hashman died in May 2007 and was buried at sea. Thank you for your service. As a career naval officer, I know the importance of sharing our service stories with the community. The Avenue of Heroes program is a wonderful visual reminder of the service and the sacrifice made by our neighbors and expresses our community's appreciation. I fully support the Avenue of Heroes program. The next biography is for Joseph Joe Howard. Joseph Howard was born in Annapolis, Maryland in 1927. As a son of a distinguished Navy captain and grandson of two Navy admirals, Howard knew he was destined for a naval career from a very early age. Upon graduating from the Severn School in Maryland, where he captained the football team and was known as a star athlete, he went on to the Naval Academy, where he played varsity lacrosse and was a member of the national championship team. After graduating in 1950, he came back to the Naval Academy to coach lacrosse for several winning seasons while teaching marine engineering at the school. When the Vietnam War came along, off Howard went. He was a very early volunteer to introduce helicopters into the fierce combat in the Mekong Delta. He commanded the first group of helicopters, HAL-3, providing aerial gunfire to the Special Forces boats. The Navy liked to work by the book, but there was no book then. Howard commanded the squadron of then cast-off Army helicopters, developing the tactics of operations and engagement for the Sea Wolf gunships used throughout the war. Cousin Admiral Henry Mustin recalled that several times he and his troops saved my bacon on the rivers of the Delta. As a veteran of more than 400 missions, Howard was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross, the Bronze Star with Combat V, the Navy Commendation Medal, and a Gold Star in lieu of the 13th Air Medal. Other tours in his 27-year naval career included a carrier-based anti-submarine warfare squadron, flight deck officer on USS Iwo Jima, the Naval Air Development Center, Johnsville, Pennsylvania, executive officer and commanding officer at HC-1 Helicopter Squadron, Imperial Beach, Naval Air Systems Command, and Army War College, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Howard and his wife of 52 years, Phyllis Freeman, spent a majority of their lives enjoying the company of countless friends and family and raising their two children, Doug and Nancy, in Coronado. Naval aviator, avid sports fan, backyard chef, master gardener, outrageous joke teller, athlete, war hero, consummate party host, lover of all cats, best friend and more, Joe Howard touched so many lives in everlasting ways. Thank you for your service. The next biography is for Thomas Tom Johnson. Captain Tom Frederick Johnson was commissioned in the U.S. Navy Chaplain Corps Reserves in 1963 and entered active duty in 1965. He had planned on staying only one period, but somehow 30 years passed by. Johnson went from a Green First Tour Chaplain to the U.S. Navy's Gray Shepherd a year before retirement while stationed at the Naval Air Station North Island. The title of Gray Shepherd rests upon the chaplain, no higher than captain in rank, serving for the longest continuous time on active duty. As he received the Gray Shepherd's award, he was asked to recall one of his most memorable experiences as chaplain. Johnson vividly recalled one night shortly after reporting for duty. He was eating dinner in the wardroom of the USS Ranger when over the PA heard his presence was required on the flight deck by the carrier's executive officer immediately. He arrived to find the XO, other officers, and several masters at arms with a young sailor who had just returned from yet another unauthorized absence. He broke loose from the masters at arms, climbed the mast to the large crosspiece, and threatened to jump if not immediately released from active duty. He wouldn't let the masters at arms get close to him. It was a cold night, but he had refused a jacket. Johnson climbed the mast, taking a masters at arms jacket with him. The man was so upset he wouldn't wear it, but he would put on Johnson's jacket. Standing beside him, Johnson looked down at the pier and noticed that the large warehouses on the pier looked like small monopoly pieces. The sailor finally allowed Johnson to get close to him, and as Johnson reached out, 
The young man grabbed him and sobbed on his shoulder. Johnson said for a moment he thought they were both going to fall. The man agreed to calm down if he were allowed to be discharged as quickly as possible. Releasing from a someone from active duty was not easy due to the draft. The process was complicated with requests and approvals, but somehow he was discharged the very next day. Johnson felt his chaplain's credentials were firmly established via scuttlebutt throughout the 3,000-man crew. Thank you for your service. My father served in the Navy, and I grew up in this community, and understand the importance of how integral the military is to the fabric of our city. The program and banners along the Avenue of Heroes serve as a daily reminder of the men and women who've served this country. Thank you for your service. The next biography is for Eric S. Christensen. Lieutenant Commander Eric S. Christensen was born in March 1972 in Portsmouth, Virginia, and grew up a Navy junior. He was a proud graduate of Gonzaga College High School in Washington, D.C., where he was a scholar, a football player, a lacrosse player, and a trumpet player in the band. He then attended one year of prep school at Phillips Academy before attending the U.S. Naval Academy, where he earned his varsity letter in heavyweight crew before graduating with honors in 1995. He served on USS Chandler in San Diego, where he earned his service warfare designation. After a tour with the SEALs as an officer in charge of a special boat unit in Coronado, he returned to the Naval Academy in 1999 to teach and begin graduate studies at St. John's College in Annapolis, Maryland. By this time, Christensen knew he wanted to be a Navy SEAL. Overcoming injury and the Navy's concern about his age, he became a SEAL in 2001. He was assigned to SEAL Team 10 in Little Creek, Virginia. On June 28, 2005, while deployed to Afghanistan in support of Operation Enduring Freedom, four members of the SEAL unit Christensen was leading were conducting search operations on Satalo Star Mountain in Kunar Province. The four were ambushed and pinned down under heavy fire by the Taliban. As Task Unit Ground Commander, Christensen led a rescue effort. Lieutenant Commander Christensen was killed when the Chinook helicopter transporting him Seven other SEALs and eight U.S. Army Night Stalkers were shot down with loss of all on board. Three of the four SEALs on the ground died of their wounds. To honor the 11 SEALs who gave their lives, a bronze memorial plaque, stone monument, and a golden medallion tree were erected near the entrance to Special Warfare Command Headquarters, Naval Amphibious Base, Coronado, and dedicated before the public on June 28, 2006, exactly one year after the casualty. He was 33 years old. He is survived by his parents, Rear Admiral and Mrs. Edward K. Christensen of Washington, D.C. His remains are interred at the U.S. Naval Academy. Thank you for your service. The next biography is for E.E. E. Ted Mouton. Captain Ted Mouton was born to Edward Monty Mouton and Clara Yearling Mouton on June 28, 1922 in Reno, Nevada. Mouton was born with aviation in his blood, as his father Monty Mouton was a World War I aviator and flight instructor, and post-military was one of the first U.S. airmail pilots. Mouton graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy in 1945, and it was immediately sent to the South Pacific in command of a minesweeper, clearing Japanese mines from shipping lanes. Upon receiving his wings after World War II, Mouton was deployed to the Korean War on two tours as a F-4U Corsair fighter bomber pilot aboard USS Boxer, USS Valley Forge, and USS Philippine Sea. Mouton was stationed at Naval Air Station North Island in 1960, and during this tour of duty was twice deployed to Vietnam for air operations on USS Bonham Richard, USS Hornet, and USS Bennington as commander of the air group. During his career, Mouton flew the SNJ aircraft, the TBM torpedo bomber, the 84 and 85 dive bombers, the F-8F fighter, the F-4U fighter, the JRB, the T-28 Trojan, the F-3D Sky Knight, the Tiger Cat, the Tracer, the Tracker aircraft, and also became Sikorsky SH-3 helicopter qualified. Commendations awarded included the Legions of Merit, Air Medals with Gold Star, Navy Unit Commendations, World War II, China, Korea, and Vietnam Service Medals, and the Presidential Unit Citation. Upon his retirement in 1969, Mouton worked on both the SA-3 anti-submarine jet version of the S-2 
which Bhutan flew in Vietnam, and the then top secret F-117 Nighthawk at Lockheed Burbank. Mouton married Adeline Lynn Mundy on February 3rd, 1946, and they had four children, Leslie, Michael, Kent, and Bradley. Service stations that the Mouton family lived at during his naval career included Dahlgren, Virginia, Norfolk, Virginia, Oceana Air, Point, Air Station, Point Magoo, Newport, Rhode Island, Coronado, and the Pentagon. The Moutons moved to Coronado once again to live out their lives. Lynn subsequently passed away from an illness, and Ted then met and married Barbara Mouton. Captain Mouton passed away in 2007. Thank you for your service. The next biography is for Vincent Patrick O'Rourke. Navy Captain Vincent Patrick O'Rourke was born on May 19, 1922 in New York City and grew up in nearby Queens. At 17, he was selected from thousands of applicants to receive a National Aeronautical Engineering Scholarship. He enrolled at Brooklyn Polytechnic Institute, which launched his lifelong pursuit of aviation excellence. At 20, O'Rourke enlisted in the Navy and was commissioned in October 1943. He served as a Hellcat fighter pilot with Fighter Squadron 74 aboard USS Kassan Bay in the Mediterranean theater. Transferred to the Pacific, he served with a fast carrier task force where he flew with Torpedo Squadron 47 on USS Bataan, flying a TBM-3 Avenger until the Japanese surrender. During the war, he was awarded medals for valor, including two Navy Cross medals and a Bronze Star. As a Lieutenant Junior grade, he was awarded his first Navy Cross for his attack on the Japanese fleet at Kobe Bay in 1945. He bombed a large aircraft carrier under heavy anti-aircraft fire and smoke screening. His second was for his role in the sinking of the Japanese cruiser Tone during the 1945 attack on Kure Harbor. He flew 200 plus combat hours on 33 strike missions aboard Bataan in five months. He was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross, five air medals, and the Meritorious Service Medal. During a 30-year career, he was second commanding officer of VF-96 Fighting Falcons, commanding officer of Fighter Squadron VF-142, and executive officer of VF-142. During the Vietnam War, he commanded USS Tripoli and USS Rainier, and was air boss and executive officer of USS Oriskany. He flew everything from all-weather aircraft to helicopter missions from 19 carriers. His final tours were Commander, Fleet Air Alameda, and Chief of Staff, 12th Naval District. O'Rourke held degrees in aeronautical engineering, industrial engineering, and human resources. He graduated from the Naval Test Pilot School and the Armed Forces Staff College. He was married to Harriet Juliet Sokol for 63 years until her passing in 2007. They had three children, James, Brian, and Alice Ann Skelton. Upon retirement, they returned to Coronado and never left. Thank you for your service. I too am proud of my father's service here in Coronado as a Navy SEAL. I was on the city council when the program was first launched and have watched it develop over the years. I'd like to encourage community members to nominate a family member, friend, or neighbor for this honor to help the city continue this important program into the future. Thank you. The next biography is for Jack R. Sloan. Affectionately known as Jake, Colonel Jack R. Sloan, United States Marine Corps, was born and raised in Los Angeles, moved to San Francisco, and graduated from Lowell High School in 1938, where he was student body president and lettered in football and track. Sloan entered the University of Southern California, Berkeley, but left college early to enlisted in flight training in World War II as a member of the Marine Corps. While on active duty, he earned a business administration degree from the University of Maryland. Sloan was accepting in, accepted into naval aviation training where he earned his coveted wings of gold in 1943 following carrier qualification on USS Wolverine IX-64 a training aircraft carrier on Lake Michigan. Later that year, following commission as a second lieutenant in the United States Marine Corps Reserves, he was ordered into combat in the South Pacific with Marine Torpedo Bombing Squadron 233, flying the TBM Avenger out of Turtle Bay Santo, and the Espiritu Islands. He flew combat missions over Munda and Bougainville in the Solomon Islands from October 1943 to May 1944. 
Following a brief release from active duty in 1945, Sloan reestablished his career in the Marine Corps in 1947. He was ordered into combat in Korea with Marine Fighting Squadron, Fighter Squadron 311, flying the F-9F2 Panther in August 1951. In 1961, he served as commanding officer of Marine Fighter Attack Squadron 232, flying the FJ Fury out of Marine Corps Air Station at Kaneohe Bay, Hawaii. In April 1965 and July 1970, Sloan served in Vietnam as Chief of Staff, 1st Marine Air Wing. Sloan was awarded two Distinguished Flying Cross Medals, the Bronze Star Medal with Combat V, and seven Air Medals along with many other citations and campaign awards. Sponsored by the Optimus Club of Coronado, Sloan was an active member for more than 40 years and served in numerous capacities as club president, district lieutenant governor, and district governor. He and his wife, Anne, and family lived in Coronado for 49 years. He was active in various business ventures and community affairs before his death in, 19, in 2013 at the age of 93. Thank you for your service. The next biography is for Mary N. Stanley. Mary Ann Zimmerman was born the youngest of five on June 26, 1922. While growing up in St. Louis, she attended St. Elizabeth Academy where she earned a bachelor's degree in nursing. She entered the Navy in 1944, serving at Balboa Hospital until the end of World War II. She was recalled to active duty in 1951 and stationed at Naval Air Station Corpus Christi in Texas. There she met a young Navy pilot who became the love of her life. She and Lieutenant Henry Hank T. Stanley, Jr. were married at the Navy Chapel in Norfolk, Virginia. In 1952, Stanley resigned her commission after eight years. Their first child, Henry T. Stanley III, was born the following year. The next duty station brought them to Naval Air Station North Island, where her husband would be assigned to USS Kearsage. While there, child number two arrived, William, in 1955. Their next orders took them to Guam, where child number three, Barbara, was born in 1959. In 1963, the family reported to Naval Air Station Alameda in California, where Hank Stanley was assigned aboard USS Midway. In the early part of 1965, he was tragically killed in a jet crash. Facing the daunting task of raising three children by herself, Stanley decided to move the family to Coronado to be close to her mother-in-law, Janet Stanley. In Coronado, Stanley was active among Sacred Heart parishioners, the Altar Society, and the Coronado Senior Center. In 1983, Stanley suffered a near-fatal ruptured cerebral aneurysm. Through extensive surgeries and rehabilitation, she was able to live a good life. Eventually, the injury took its toll and she required more in-home care. On May 14, 2010, the Lord accepted her into his kingdom. She is predeceased by siblings, Elmer, Werner, Vincent, Paul, and her husband, Commander Henry T. Stanley, Jr. She is survived by her loving children, Barbara, her two sons and their spouses, William J. and Megan, and Commander Henry T. and Anna, and four grandchildren, Ryland, Reese, Henry T. IV, and Mia. Thank you for your service. The next biography is for George William Watson. U.S. Navy Commander George William Watson was born in Medford, Massachusetts in 1920. He worked diligently at Tilton Prep School to acquire the necessary skills for admission to the Naval Academy. He was the first alternate at the Naval Academy and hence signed up for the Coast Guard Academy. Watson was literally in line at the Coast Guard Academy in early fall 1940 when he received a phone call from his mother letting him know he had just been admitted to the Naval Academy. He was officially sworn in at the Naval Academy the next day, achieving academic honors and becoming a star third baseman on the varsity baseball team. Due to World War II, the class of 1944 graduated one year early. Watson was asked to stay to help train incoming plebes. One perk was that he would be able to choose his next duty assignment. He chose the destroyer USS Fraser and set sail for the South Pacific. After deployment, he requested flight training and began flight school in Pensacola, Florida, and furthered his studies at Ottumwa, Iowa. In 1945, he received his gold wings and achieved his desire of becoming a naval aviator. Watson was assigned to fly PB-4Y2s in a patrol squadron in the Bering Sea from 1946 to 1949, looking for Russian submarines and aircraft. 
He was an instructor at the Naval Academy in seamanship and tactics. In 1955, he was sent to Stanford University, where he earned a master's degree in personnel administration and was assigned to the Comfair Elm staff in Naples, Italy. In 1959, he attended Armed Forces Staff College in Norfolk, Virginia, and became an executive officer at Naval Training Command in Bainbridge, Maryland. In 1960, it was there that he met and married his wife of 53 years, Lieutenant Jean Watson. His last assignment was commanding officer of the Personnel Research and Training Activity in Point Loma, California. He retired in 1969 and continued his work in personnel administration with the San Diego Probation Department until 1985. During his service, he received several medals and awards, including the American Defense, American Campaign, Asiatic Pacific Campaign, World War II, and National Defense Medals. Thank you for your service. The next biography is for Jean Louise Watson. Longtime Coronado resident, retired U.S. Navy Lieutenant Jean Louise Watson was born in Lansdowne, Pennsylvania in 1927. Upon graduating as a University of Delaware Blue Hen with honors, Watson began her career as a high school music teacher. She soon wanted more adventure and pursued a job with American Airlines. She enjoyed the travel and decided to take it to a new level and became a Navy Wave, woman accepted for volunteer emergency service. On April 24, 1952, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Watson enlisted in the Navy and was commissioned as an ensign wave. She loved Navy life. Her first assignment was in Newport, Rhode Island at the Naval Line School, where she was trained in the security of classified matters. She then received orders to San Diego, where she was the education officer at the Naval Training Center. Her primary role was administering service exams. She had two very close fellow WAVE friends during that time, and together they formed a camaraderie that endured the challenges of being woman in the service and all that, is entailed, that it entailed. In 1958, Watson received orders for Bainbridge, Maryland, and there she helped train WAVE recruits during the height of the Korean War. Well, at the officers' club one evening, she met fellow Naval officer George Watson. They married in March 1960, and she was subsequently required by Navy regulations to resign from the Navy, as she could not be in the Navy and have children. Watson then served the Coronado community in meaningful ways. She was a Sunday school teacher at Graham Memorial Presbyterian Church for years and manager and volunteer of the Graham Memorial Church Thrift Cottage for decades. She is a member of the Philanthropic Educational Organization, Women's Club, Crown Garden Club, and was a president and active member of the San Diego Symphony Women's Committee. Watson reminisces with pride about her career in the Navy, as well as her life in Coronado. She's a true patriot and wonderful representative of this special city. During her service, she received the National Defense Service Medal. Thank you for your service. Our final biography is for Horace Red West. Retired U.S. Navy Captain Horace Red West was born in Annapolis, Maryland on June 20, 1917 to Commander and Mrs. Marcus West. He had one sibling, Grace West Hoffman. West, who went by the nickname Red, entered the U.S. Naval Academy with the class of 1941 before transferring to and graduating from the University of Arizona with a degree in aeronautical engineering. Subsequently commissioned an ensign in the United States Navy, the service sent West to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Boston, where he earned an advanced degree in aeronautical engineering. Following this, he earned the Naval Aviator's Coveted Wings of Gold and flew propeller aircraft throughout his 28-year career. West's duty stations included at Sugi, Japan, where he was in charge of the overhaul of Naval Aircraft of the Sixth Fleet, Litchfield Park in Arizona, now Luke Air Force Base multiple at-sea assignments, several tours on the Navy staff in Washington, D.C., and on ComNav Airpack staff in Coronado, where he led aircraft maintenance efforts. West's decorations included the Legion of Merit and Meritorious Service Medals. He and his bride, Margaret Hooker, had two children, Anna and Timothy, and later became the proud grandparents of three grandchildren, Dustin, Joshua, and Dylan. Upon retirement from the Navy, 
West worked for a year at Roar in San Diego prior to serving as chairman of Security Pacific National Bank in Coronado, a position he held for 10 years. Active in the Rotary Club of Coronado, he was selected as the 1981 Rotarian of the Year. In addition to serving on the board of the Air and Space Museum in Balboa Park, he was an avid golfer and world traveler. Passing away shortly after the turn of the century, Captain Red West was buried in Fort Rosecrans National Cemetery on March 8, 2001. Thank you for your service. The City of Coronado thanks all the honorees, their family and friends, the Hometown Banner Committee members, and all who helped put this virtual ceremony together. As we approach Memorial Day, we are honored to tell the stories of these local heroes and to show our appreciation for all they do or have done for our country.